Good morning, everybody. This is Dana Michelle. I am the creator and director of Moncree Springs, and I'm coming to you live from Cafe Resistance right here on Northside for our summer series, Moncree Springs Arts and Activisms podcast. I'm so excited to be with y'all here again at Cafe Resistance. It's a beautiful morning. I feel like I woke up refreshed. I feel like I woke up ready to go because guess what? My special guest today is one for the books, and I actually felt myself get a little nervous, and so y'all feel prepared for me. I got to do this right, because this is for my friend and my brother, Trey Ford, who's going to be joining me for today's conversation about neighborhood preservation in Black communities here in Jacksonville. Before I get started, I want to make sure I give a shout out to our sponsors who have been so gracious to help support this effort to curate conversations about neighborhood preservation and Black. I appreciate their support. Black Films Matter is a film programming company. And if you have any community events that center around film, they are the people to call. I also want to give a shout out to my friend and sister, Martinique Lewis, who is the creator of ABC Travel Green Book. ABC Travel Green Book is a app as well as a book that can help you get all of your Black businesses in one place across the world. So if you're traveling to Florida, if you're traveling to California, or even to Paris, she has curated a list of Black businesses that you can patronize across the diaspora. That includes shopping, that includes dining, and anything you like to do while you're on vacation. And so before we get started with our conversation today, I want you to hear from our sponsors. So I would love for you to take a listen right here. Trey Ford. And I'm Aaron Day, and we are the co-founders of Black Films Matter. We started Black Films Matter in 2018 with what was supposed to be a small private screening for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, but it immediately exploded into something way larger than we could imagine, which was the birth of Black Films Matter. So we took it from Black Panther to a black exploitation series, which are those films that came about in the 70s when people of color didn't have a lot of opportunity in the industry. Then we brought the brand to Jacksonville with Queen and Slim private screening, Grab private screening, most recently, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom to commemorate Chadwick Boseman's last film with a rooftop cocktail party and uh, private screening there as well. So we create dynamic film experiences for people of color. Whether it is a private screening or a drive-in movie, we want to bring it to a city near you. So our end game is to be the pioneers of the rebirth of Dreamland Theater, which was destroyed almost 100 years ago in the Tulsa race riots in a place that was nicknamed Black Wall Street. And so follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook. On Instagram, it's Black Films Matter, spelled exactly like that. And on Facebook, it's BLK Films Matter. Black traveler, from the moment I arrive in any destination, I want to know where the black communities and black owned businesses are. And for the first time ever, there's an app for that. The ABC Travel Green Book app is the smartest way for travelers to connect with the African diaspora globally. The ABC Travel Green Book app allows you to find black owned businesses through filters and keyword searches. This app houses everything in one place so you can search without the hassle. Don't see a business in the app? No worries. The recommend a business feature is there to help us stay up to date so that everyone wins. Traveling solo but still want to connect with people in places that celebrate you? No problem. At your discretion, you can set your profile to available and meet with others in your area. Not only can you identify black owned businesses and set your own itinerary, you can review them too. When it comes to black history and important landmarks, Marks, no worry, we got you. The app helps identify what the museums and media doesn't. It tells our stories. This app will revolutionize the way we travel. This app is the one we've all been waiting for. With everything at our fingertips, connect with the African diaspora today. The ABC Travel Green Book app is available now. All right, listen, if y'all haven't downloaded the ABC Travel Green Book app, go ahead and do it now. Pick up your phones, download the app, and start exploring all these Black businesses that's especially right here in Jacksonville, but all across the world. So I want to thank Black Films Matter, and I also want to thank my friend Martinique Lewis. So without any further ado, ado let me see, let me, get my, whew, let me get my breaths in, deep in, deep out. I'm going to bring my friend on, Mr. Trey Ford, so that we can get this conversation started, because guess what, y'all? 
he needs no formal introduction. He has everything under control, and I know he's ready to have this conversation with us. And so I'm gonna bring him on and see uh, if we can get this thing started. Trey, what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. How about yourself? I had to throw it on Do Not Disturb. I got a flurry of texts, like right when I was about to start. I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, because they know where you at. They know where you at. They, they try to see at. what's going on on live. I hope not. I hope not. It's hot out here in the street. <laughs> How are you? Thank you for joining me for this podcast. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How about yourself? Listen, I was up at 1 o'clock this morning getting all kind of nervous. I was doing my research because, you know, I, I really admire and respect you, so I wanted to do this right. And I found myself up at 1 a.m. this morning looking through all your your uh, social media accounts, re um, revisiting some of the work that you and I have done together so I could prepare for this conversation. So I think I'm ready, but I'm ready to get into it. We're talking about historic preservation of Black neighborhoods. We're talking about art and activism and I don't think anybody fits that more than you. You are the art and the activism put together. That's right. That's right. Um, you know, it's interesting we're having this conversation. I came to Jacksonville from Gainesville most recently after being in Gainesville for about 14 years. And one of the last things I did in Gainesville was the Fifth Avenue Art Festival, which was the place that the slaves that were in Hale Plantation, which is now a really nice neighborhood, and it's where they settled and where they had their black wall street and so i was listening to that video that we made for black films matter is is pretty dated but i i just i happen to have the new black wall street shirt on that i got up in atlanta for a business that's really similar I'll to one bridge i see your shirt yeah 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 now i was thinking what should i wear today and i had a black books matter shirt i had a shirt that said ford and this was the one i landed on and then boom here we are coming well, full circle that actually speaks to who you are because you are multi-talented. You have a multi-faceted business that spans from agriculture to film to brand strategies. So I want to get into that. But first, since we're talking to black, about Black neighborhoods, I want you to tell people a little bit about your origin story. Uh, you are working with me as executive producer on Moncry Springs, and we're highlighting Moncry Springs as a historic Black community. And you have some ties to this community through your work. And I ain't going to tell it. You can tell it better than I am. But your mom is a, a, a iconic figure in this community, too, because of the work she's done as an educator. So tell people your tie to the neighborhood and to the north side. Definitely. So I'm going to go all the way back to my birthplace, which is Louisville, Kentucky. And so I'm from the Ville, but not Jacksonville. And the reason I bring that up is because my parents went to the school called Central, which was primarily the black school and integration was happening right around when they were coming up. They're the same age as Ruby and they were born in 1954. So with that being said, I my parents have always been involved in what may be considered now as the inner city or the urban core or the black side of town, the other side of the tracks, even when they became successful. My dad is a retired Navy. Uh, he made it up to captain in the Navy, and my mom has been an educator most of my life, but she's done things like work for the FBI and things like that. So as an educator, when I was in South Florida, she worked at a school called Stranahan, which is also in Broward and fits that bill. And then we, when we moved to Jacksonville in the late 90s, the, her first job and pretty much her only teaching job throughout that time span until she retired was at Reigns High School. And so I used to have to ride with her two reins and then get on the bus to Paxson where I went to school. And that's 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 my main tie. I ended up meeting a lot of the people at Reigns. Those were some of my best friends at University of Florida in Gainesville where I moved. And though I, I grew up on the south side, I was just always on the north side, especially when I didn't have no car. Absolutely. And I have some funny stories because you, you're just a little bit younger than I am. But I have some classmates who went to Reigns and they say, yeah, I know Trey because he used to always be in a Miss Ford class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people remember you from that time, knowing your mom, having her as their teacher. But I think your origin story really speaks to how you got to where you are today and how you are an activist and how your career has led you to be so impactful in our communities. Um, I want to talk about your work and I, I 
think if I want to start somewhere, I have to start in Moncrief. Um, talk about your work in that particular neighborhood as it relates to some of the farming work you've done um, and how you kind of came to have a presence in this neighborhood. Definitely. So last summer, I was hired to be the market manager at a place called Earthless Farm and Market, which is a part of the Claire White mission. And it was a challenging undertaking because the attempt was to try and connect people who have a certain style of eating and how they operate with their finances and trying to curb that style and, and into something that's a lot more healthy and into something that could be really beneficial from the standpoint of, you know, being able to have fresh fruit produce instead of corner store produce, which has been shipped all the way in from somewhere else. And the job was a little lower paying than I would normally accept, especially being somebody who's an independent contractor and a freelancer and an entrepreneur. But it val I took the job because it validated my degree. I, I went to the University of Florida for agriculture operations management, uh, initially with the hope to do development for affordable homes and apply community garden and agriculture to those homes. And it felt like a really, really good fit, even though it was an uphill battle as far as the resources available and the skill sets around me to execute this function. But I think I think we did a good job at least getting it off the ground and getting it up in the air where we did a, a, a large launch of the farmer's market. And what I found is that though it didn't reach every single pocket of Moncrief, it, it reached some of them that were ready, but it, it created, I think, a shockwave of people interested in the, the learning process of gardening, agriculture, and I believe that agriculture is art and it's the largest form or the initial form of activism as far as taking matters into your own hands so you don't have to be dependent on the government or city resources or whatever the case is or other people. I agree. And I'm really um, proud of the work that you did at Earthless Farm. And it's really significant to me because that's kind of how we met. And so, you know, when I think about your influence in this specific neighborhood, um, it's not just your role as the market manager of that particular farm, but it's also in your role as the Duval Soil and Water supervisor, which is kind of how you even got on my radar. Because at the time I was working for Earth's Farm as well, and we were looking for someone who could launch the market. And we were looking for someone who had the experience and the knowledge to not only facilitate managing a market, building a relationship with vendors, but also building a relationship in a community that, like you said, really has been a hard neighborhood to impact because of the mental state um, as far as people wanting to be interested in farming, wanting to be interested in um, eating fresh because it's a food desert. And so when I saw the work you were doing as Duval Soil and Water Supervisor, which you have to start talking about that too, because that has been like a monumental part of your career as well. I knew that if we could get you on our team, that the farm could grow and that we could start chipping away at some of those problems that Moncrief Springs, Moncrief Road, that whole northwest side and that Myrtle Avenue area were experiencing. So talk about how being Duval also on the water supervisor tied into this work you were doing in the community. Definitely. So Duval Soil and Water was started over 70 years ago as a for us by us type of entity it was for the people by the people and it's a special district of government that sometimes works similar to a nonprofit. and what we do is we speak on behalf of and move on behalf of landowners and users which is pretty much everybody so a lot of it is catered to or is around the subject of conservation things like making sure that the dunes are not uh, that are not affected so that the people who have houses on the beach don't have their houses start to wash away and all the sand start to wash away. Uh, the cleanliness of the water in the St. John's River and people, uh, you know, use that for a source of protein as far as fishermen and people who get shrimp and things like that out of the water. And also very much so involved in agriculture and farming. In fact, Duval Swan and Water has a piece of property that's going to be on uh, on the green line or the S line, and it's on Moncrief, Moncrief and 13. And right I now, this, yeah, it's called Regeneration Park. The previous board was able to do something similar to what happened at Earthers as far as going into the soil, getting it tested, finding out that there is some toxin in there, and then resurfacing it, extracting some of the bad stuff out so that now it's 
it's clean soil. And mm -hmm. there is now being plans about, you know, what should go in the place of this clean soil? Should it be a park? Should it be a pollinator garden? Can it be citrus grove and things like that? And that's again, right in Moncrief Springs, right down the street from the farm. Um, okay, you gotta take me over there. That might be part of the research. Yeah. I need to go and check out Regeneration Park. And Absolutely. even as you're talking about some of the decisions that the board made for Duval Soil and Water, the board that you got elected into was one of the most diverse boards ever. Is that true? That is true. From what I understand and from what I've seen, uh, most of the boards do not look like us, and there's usually a, a one off or a two off. Uh, this board had, uh, I call it almost the Captain Planet board. It looked like the the different kids from Captain Planet that would put their powers together to get Captain Planet to come through, which is me. So, uh, you know, we had uh, somebody from the LGBTQ community. We had uh, people of different skin tones and variations. Um, we had uh, people from Jacksonville originally, people um, transplants. So all of the above was really encompassed in our in our board. And those, some of those board members from the originally elected board had to take, had to move on. We were able to replace them with people who were able to hit the ground running and, and carry the baton forward. That's fascinating because I'm thinking about the significance. We're still talking about neighborhood preservation and historic black communities. Having an organization like Duval Soil and Water make impact in a neighborhood like Moncrief Springs, which is designated by the USDA as a food desert, it's huge because you have people who are trying to overcome hurdles of poverty, crime, all the while trying to figure out how they're going to eat and not just eat fresh, but I mean, eat and feed their families every day. So when I think about y'all's work doing community gardens, y'all's work um, with the Start Farming program, how do you feel like that impacts a neighborhood like Moncrief where you do see people who have poverty, have crime? It's Health Zone 1, the people that live in Moncrief are the highest rate of people in the entire city suffering from heart disease, diabetes. How does an organization like Do Also on the Water help impact neighborhoods like this? I would say through partially through the grants that we're able to apply for. I was just looking at one and it was a blue water grant where a school can get some money in order to educate students on water conservation, water cleanliness and things like that. And I, I highlight that grant and another grant, a beekeeping grant that allows a school to have an observatory beekeeping um, beehive, basically, and learn where it is that their food is coming from, how it's pollinated, how that process works. And I, I bring those two things together because in my mind, really, the, the lower generation or the younger generation has to be exposed. And that's what's going to cause a lot of the transition that take place. And a lot of people feel like that's a slower grind and they really want to impact the the uh, the season people and the people who are already in their careers or in their career age. And, you know, I think that that's important, too. But I think the transformation really comes from programs that Duval Soil and Water has, like the speech and poster contest the Envirothon, which is a brain brawl team sport between the different schools and groups of students. And that exposure is really what will get people to start to, if you've never heard about it, then there's no way for you to in, uh, participate in it. And I think that that exposure, we've got schools like uh, Stanton nearby, uh, which is a college prep school, also Reigns and Reball, A. Philip Randolph, I believe, is a magnet school. But all of those different schools have some type of program, whether it's culinary arts or even just your, your traditional health class that will allow you them allow us to do ball soil and water conservation to participate with them and we're facilitators so we want to bring in other partners that have great information to be involved with the students as well i think that's great and so for those of you that are just joining us i'm here with trey ford who if i try to list everything he do we would take up the whole interview but for right now he's talking about his role with duval soil and water as supervisor of group three and we're talking about neighborhood preservation for the moncrief springs arts and activism series we are doing a live remote at cafe resistance so if you're in the area you have time to come and join us here you can listen to the podcast live in the building and shop your favorite authors right here at Cafe Resistance on Sutel Road, but I am so thankful to have Trey here with us um, talking about art and activism. And I'm really curious, you know, as we think about how artists and activists come together to help build our neighborhoods, specifically Black neighborhoods that often get overlooked um, and underrepresented, um, 
I want to ask you about your involvement in the arts community. So we've talked about your career in the agricultural sector, but tell us a little bit about how you've been able to build community as an artist or what I would I would say is the artist patron. <laughs> Talk about that. Sure. So my what most most people know me in the art side as somebody who's a film programmer and film programming is the event side of film. It's the world premieres, it's the film festivals, the panels and things like that. And when we started the company Black Films Matter, it was really to drive people together because history is translated through art, culture through art. Art is really a common ground where a bridge is built between the young and the the season between the the black and the white between any any bodies of people and the way i see film is that film encompasses all of the versions of art whether it's visual artists i remember in candy man and there's another movie too where uh one of the main characters was an art curator or a visual artist or something like that and you always see these different scenes where there's some type of art in the background you have performing arts where music is laced all through a film and so you know with film being all-encompassing it puts me in connection with people who want to have a career full-time in art and they haven't connected that business-wise yet so as somebody who was a former magazine publisher understanding advertising understanding working with corporate sponsors and and things like that i'm able to be a bridge as well as far as taking an artist and applying some level of business to it, some level of process, some system for them to be able to save themselves some time, energy, and money and duplicate and create some residual income. I like this uh, acronym RICH. Yeah. Absolutely. Residual and income creates happiness. RICH. <laughs> you got to have a system for that. It, it doesn't happen by accident. You know, no. even with event curators, event curators, they have these fancy ideas and things like that and don't know what a PL statement is, don't know what revenue and expenses is. So it makes it hard for them to even be involved in partnerships because they don't even speak the language. And I think that's what really has been the glue for you and I and how we work together because we have complementary skills because what I lack, you definitely bring to the table as it relates to taking film and making a business out of it. And you've been such a resource for me to take Moncree Springs documentary to the next level so that we can tell these stories that are so important about the Black experience. And I have to kind of intersect, interject this um, memory I have. You know, when I first met you, I said, you missed a quotable because every time we have a conversation, you give me an acronym or something. And I ain't gonna look at that you just gave me rich. You gotta say it again. What you say rich for? Residual income creates happiness. We residual, got residual income bills. creates happiness. <laughs> we got residual bills. We need that residual income combating them bills. Absolutely. And then you gave me another one a while ago. WITF, what's in it for them? Or what's in it for me? And so yeah, that's everybody's was, favorite channel. Yeah, that's your favorite radio station. What's in it for me? And I think that when you are an artist you do have to have an acumen for business because two things that artists want and being an artist myself this has been true for me you want people to see your work and you want people to pay you for your work but if you don't have the skills and the acumen to leverage that then you end up making things that never see the light of day and so i've been really fortunate to have your consult and to have your partnership as we develop Moncree springs which is still in production and we're hoping to have that done by september because i think People don't see art as a form of business. And you've been very instrumental, and I want you to talk about this, in the city of Jacksonville, make sure that people recognize artists as legitimate business owners. Can you talk about how you have been an advocate for artists with the city of Jacksonville through your work on the Arts and Culture Committee? Definitely. So uh, right when uh, Mayor Deegan was elected, uh, anytime there's a new regime and we're starting to see it, uh, with with the presidential campaign going on, there's there's a transition that needs to take place. And a lot of times when it's going from one party to another party, there's a house cleaning and then a bringing in of a whole bunch of new people and ideas into this into this governmental system. So when Mayor Deegan was elected, it was a swap from a conservative regime into a liberal regime, which 
and on my end or my perspective is that there are certain things that are bipartisan that are beneficial regardless of how you feel about the macro uh two parties or whatnot and art is one of those things where everybody is consuming art in some way shape or, shape or form even food is called culinary art and so i was part of the art culture and entertainment transition committee and my specific subcommittee that i served on with yaya and adam and yoli from explore jazz core as well as matt from wjct was using culture as a destination jacksonville has this amazing culture and we were driving film as an opportunity to bring people together not just bring people from la into jacksonville but support the local filmmakers in jacksonville so that they can be outward facing and even attract other people in film in here because they know that we have people with the skill set and the talent and basically we spent two months meeting about two weeks uh twice a week and we came up with a long sheet of recommendations to the city as to how we can retain talent how we can use art as a healing tool how we can use art as an attraction uh, tool etc how we can support artists uh, artist retention so basically we're starting to see a year later some of those things come in effect with the cultural art coalition doing a ten thousand dollar artist grant for just general expenses of being an artist and being a human being that does art we have a film grant that is that one of the there's three film grants that came out but one of the specific ones is about people here being able to take their film on the back end and actually post produce and market that said film after it's done which is a step that a lot of filmmakers skip and there's a there's actually a, a website uh, or there's a piece of the website i think it's the city of jacksonville website or the transition website we'll where you can go it. through all of the different uh, things that we suggested and it wasn't just art it was uh transportation it was veteran and military services and things like that and so this yeah. is a robust um document that you can go and kind of get uh, a head start on what are some of the things that might be coming forward because mayor deegan was looking for shovel ready things to do right away to impact jacksonville and the experience of jacksonville from a tourist standpoint and from a native standpoint yeah and you and we'll post those because i want to make sure a lot of people are commenting on social right now that they love black films matter i see some comments from onyx yeah. sullivan i see comments from latoya goodman and we actually have about four or five people in cafe resistance who are listening Hello live now. Thank you for being here what's up um, cafe resistance black book matter black books matter too black books matter and black films matter that's right and so you know i'm thinking about the people who know you for your work on the committee with city of jacksonville and your work with black films matter who would be interested in the grant so we'll make sure we post a link to that in this post but you said that art can be a form of healing and it could be an attractor for tourism and that is my specific interest my interest in making the documentary about Moncrief Springs is to let people know that the North Side is a beautiful place to live, work, and play. And this specific documentary is talking about how tourism in urban areas can actually help preserve Black history. So all the things you've already listed amplify, I think, the message that's coming forth in the documentary about Moncrief Springs. When you invest in the North Side, you invest in Jacksonville. You make the North Side better, you make Jacksonville better. And when you support artists, you support the city as a whole. So I just am in admiration of the work that you and the others on that committee, Adam, Yaya, um, Hope McMath, the work that y'all are doing together is so necessary right now because I believe that artists are the prophets. They are the translators, like you said, and they speak to the past they tell us about the present they tell us how to prepare for the future and if we don't support artists then i really do feel that our society is lost and so knowing that um people like yourself people of color are part of the conversation is really important because sometimes those dollars don't make it to black artists don't make it to black filmmakers don't make it to the black community at all so how do you see um yourself not just being an advocate for artists but using yourself as an advocate for a black artist who live in black communities because my series has been talking to artists who come out of moncrief um i talked to rashad hawkins last week he grew up in moncrief i talked to malcolm jackson who's a photographer he grew up in Audis, and these are all very 
well-known artists, um, artists who have work that has gone beyond Jacksonville, beyond the state of Florida, and they came from the north side. How are you making sure that you're a bridge or how are you helping to be a bridge for black artists coming out of these neighborhoods? Uh, I would say two ways. The number one way is being the anti-gatekeeper. And what I find is that a lot of people are doing it on their own because they're, they're not sure how to access certain information. And there are people who find said information and then hold it to themselves because they are in fear of some type of competition preventing them from being able to get that or because they're a hater or for whatever reason. I just never understood that. So I would say primarily it's when I was having the art, culture, and entertainment meetings last year, I was inviting the people who I knew of that were in this space to be a part of those meetings because these meetings are public meetings and the information is right there, but not, a lot of people don't want you to know about it because they want to use it for themselves without, uh, and, and they, there's a scarcity mindset that I feel is in sometimes in the black community, maybe it's in Jacksonville, maybe it's everywhere, but the scarcity mindset is detrimental. And because there's so much, there's, there's enough for everybody and your lane is your lane. Uh, the other way is I've been able to apply for some of these grants on behalf of artists or being able to apply for a grant that's part of a larger project where I know that in order for me to knock out the capability statements, I'm going to have to hire said artists. So even when we do something as small as a, a private screening, we'll hire somebody to maybe do an independent artist. I, I remember we did a we did a drive-in movie with um, One Bridge over in the Regency parking lot, and it was coming to America. And as part of that opportunity to have all that space and have those screens, we brought in food trucks, we brought in uh, models, we brought in different segments of art. Again, using film as this all-encompassing thing where fashion is included, where culinary art is included, where music is included. And I think that I just great create great containers that are larger larger than myself to where other people can get involved in those containers. And more often than not, what's in it for me is, is some money and I like other people to get paid as well too. So one of the number one question I ask vendors, whether it's a farmer's market or whether it's a Black Films Matter event is, hey, did you make some money? And that's the reality Preach. because in order Preach. for us to keep doing what we're doing, we gotta make some money. I mean, it's the, the rate of exchange. The barter system is still there to a certain degree, but your bill company is not allowing you to give them some crochet earrings for your, your rent. You know what I Preach. mean? And so we need that money. Okay. <laughs> so I want I want everybody to get paid. And I think, you know, we did an event together in June that I thought was really um it was a boot camp for me because that was the first time that I've done a Black Film Matters event. We did a pitch party and we got a panel of folks together who are professionals and experts in the film um, industry locally here in Jacksonville. And you said something that um, I'm, I'm committing to memory. You said we have to have legitimacy to how we run our businesses as creatives. And there are some things that are industry standard that we cannot overlook and ignore. And one of those, it was a running joke because of Gene, was craft services. <laughs> But there were some other things that you said legitimize how we run our creative businesses. And I think that, you know, if you're a filmmaker, if you're a photographer, if you're a, a performer, um, any of those things, culinary artists, that you have to have the business acumen and you have to understand what the business standard is. Because when people can get jobs elsewhere, Atlanta, Miami, New Orleans, places that are outside of Jacksonville, but within the vicinity that they can drive or commute, you know, they will seek out those opportunities more than they would locally because we don't have the standard set for how to run creative businesses. So do you feel like you've contributed anything unique um, with your specific business, Black Film Matters, and maybe some other artists that you've partnered with on setting a new standard for creatives and how they get paid and how they run their businesses? Definitely. I, I would say that being the example is the way that I've created a new standard and specifically i'll use an example of having a pitch deck not not many people know of me as an artist per se where i'm performing something specific like music and i took that on as hey if i'm going to ask people to have a pitch deck or to have a press kit then i'm going to get one myself and the press kit is the the artist's resume right even if you don't have a website which may have a little bit more complexity to it a, a pdf format presentation of what it is that you're capable of and what it is that you charge 
is very important as a basis for even somebody like me who can be a booking agent or a manager to utilize when speaking on your behalf. And so I started asking different artists, do they have one? Do they have one? And I said, you know what? Let me go get one, figure out what the pricing is and go through that process so then I can turn around and, and bring it back. And I, I just think of myself as always the the test smarty because I ain't no dummy now, but I'll go out and trailblaze <laughs> and figure out what it is that I need to do. And then I'll bring that elixir back. Um, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Coach Michelle Kennedy, uh, we call each other extractors because, you know what, I'll go ahead and pay this masterclass fee and go and get the information and then refacilitate it to people in an integrous way, not to try and take their master class and then resell it for myself, because we see people do that all the time. And that's not what I'm talking about, but just more so, hey, this is what I learned as far as how to properly structure your podcast in a way where you can make money right away, even when you don't have a thousand uh, subscribers. And there's a lot of free information out there, but there's TMI and people get lost in all of that information. And so I, I think of myself as a yeah, synthesizer. Overload. Right. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I can look at the macro and synthesize, hey, this is the main point of this. And I think that's that's the biggest help that I have for for different artists and stuff like that, because you just get caught up in analysis paralysis and then you don't do anything and the doers get blessed, not the thinkers. All right. I, I receive it. I receive it. And I, I can say to those of you that are listening that I have been um, a witness and a, a user of some of these services Trey is talking about and they really do work. And when he says he's a gate opener, I mean, he holds the gate open when it comes to information. He holds the gate open when it comes to um, resources. He holds the gate open when it comes to relationships. But you have to understand the value in someone like that. And for me, it's really taking my project, which Moncrief Springs has been in development for about a year now. But without your partnership, I don't think I would have made it this far. And I really appreciate that. And I'm thinking about, you know, when you talked about making yourself the example for others, you are not just an example in how to do it, but you are an example of how to do it successfully because you've won awards for your work. You are a recipient of the Ken Knight Award. You received that last year in 2023. Um, your film Art of Flow, uh, Love is a Mood, that has been in film festivals and even streaming on Quelly. I want you to talk about what success has looked like for you and how that experiment experimentation phase has manifested into some successes for your work. Definitely. I I'll start with Art of Flow because as a film programmer, we're always known for putting together events of a certain size and having them be a certain theme and feel. And and that's a specific mode uh, that we we mastered. And production is something that we haven't been as involved in because that's on the front end of that production line of you write a film and then the film is produced and you get actors and things like that and then it makes it to us at the end. So I'll say that with Art of Flow, my only production experience came from being in the church and being over the video department where we're doing a live praise and worship where we're switching the cameras and things like that and with art of flow that wasn't the intent but that's where i drew the the expertise from as far as hey we, we need to cut these angles we need to do this and even though we only have two cameras let's just put the best product flow forward because art of flow took place in the water bar which the way that we arranged the seating it only fit about 25 people so there wasn't a huge income opportunity unless we were going to bust each individual person across the head to see Larry and Amu perform uh, who are more so up and coming artists. And and with that in mind, it's like, hey, let's capture this moment. So we captured the moment and it wasn't everything that we knew it could have been had we had all the cameras and had all the post production and things like that. This was in 2021. I remember after dinner on Blanc in that year, we came, we did it and it was done. And one day I just decided, hey, we'll put this in a couple film festivals. It'll cost me between you know, $25 and $150, and let's just see what it does. And when we were accepted into the Hip Hop Film Festival and we were accepted into the Detroit Black Film Festival, even that alone breeds confidence because we know what other ideas we have and how better we could execute it now that we did the first one. That by itself let us know, hey, we need to keep doing this. Well, with getting accepted into those film festivals, not even winning an award in either one, that got the attention of Quelly TV, which is a black woman owned streaming platform based out of DC, but it's available on all of the different platforms like Apple TV and Samsung TV and the Fire Stick and all that stuff. 
And this last quarter, we were the number one watched film on Quelly TV, over 690,000 minutes watched. And to me, it's because of the uniqueness of the product. It's because it's music, so it's something that can play in the background. And we were nitpicking ourselves on all the nuances of, oh, I wish this cut was better, and oh, the color is funny here, or oh, the sound messed up there. And at the end of the day, it's create, don't wait. I learned that in Greenlit, Greenlit ATL, which is a, a kind of like a filmmaker meetup in Atlanta. And they're saying, hey, create, don't wait. You know somebody who knows how to edit video. He may not have, he may be editing Instagram videos, but he know how to cut and slice and dice. You know somebody yeah. who's beautiful, who can put on some clothes. You know somebody who is articulate, who can talk about some stuff. Boom, there goes a little skit right there. Record it and right. learn. Learn as you go. And that's why I was giving you an applause because the fact that it exists, and that's another quotable that I wrote down in my book of Trey Ford sayings, create don't wait. I feel like when that vision is conceived in you, you got to do everything you can to birth it out. You got to have it come into um, the, the physical realm. You got to make it exist. And um, when you talked about your process, making that short um, article and you talked about pulling your experiences from the church, you know, one thing that I really value about you is that you are a man of faith. And I think in order to be successful at business, be successful in um, community building and community organizing, you have to be able to see beyond what you see in the natural. And I think your faith lends itself to your success. And so I really do um, honor you for that because, you know, when you're doing something that's never been done before, when you are the first of your kind, you really have to have a confidence and a belief in yourself that everybody can't always see your vision but god gave you that vision and so you have to run with it even when nobody else will and um i think that with all of the aspects of your businesses black films matter Art of Flow, Duval Soil and Water, um, even some of the events that you're doing which we're going to talk about in a second um i think that supporting someone like you really is pouring back into ourselves. And so when I'm thinking about the people who may be listening and those who are joining us live here at Cafe Resistance, that when, you know, we support and uplift people who are doing like what, what you're doing, it really makes our community stronger. It really does. Thank you. Absolutely. So speaking of Art of Flow, we do have a clip and I want us to show it. So can you introduce it and, and we'll play it? I think it's about six minutes long, but I really want people to see this. So as we've talked about what you can do, I want them to see what you can do. So this clip, if I remember which one it is, we did Art of Flow as an event three different times. And again, the reason that you create Don't Wait is because there were slight production hiccups in each of the three times. Art of Flow 2 is the one that actually made it into the uh, streaming platform. But Art of Flow 3 was one of my favorite because it's one of my favorite artists in, in Jacksonville, King Travelite. And we actually have something that we're working on that's a documentary that will tie in his work with Art of Flow and some other things as well. And again, the, the, the main thing I want to articulate about this is it's had a Black woman-owned business. It's a Black artist. It's a Black customers and, and stuff like that. Not to say that we don't want anybody money and not to say that we gonna share space with other people, but this is black, 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 black. You see the new Black Wall Street. And so I like the, the opportunity of these performance-based events to really reshare the dollar multiple times in multiple places. I'm looking forward to working with uh, Vibe Live and the Cereal Bar to recreate the same type of energy where the dollar is being shared multiple times in our community the same way that you'll see in the Jewish community or in some of the eight different Asian communities that exist in the United States. And so with that being said, and it was filmed at Murray Hill, check out Art of Flow, King Travelite. This song is titled... Oh, never mind. So it is Love is Movie. <laughs> Allegedly. Self-love, self-love, what is self-love? Some say it's manicures and pedicures, long walks on the beach, long white tees and gold chains hanging down to your knees. Trips to Vegas and Maui, white sands under your feet. Drifting low from head to toe, 
ain't shit you can tell me cause I love myself. I take care of me. Me, me, and my family. Self-love is shadow work. some hurt, big shit, have a nigga grabbing his dick like damn, this ain't it, then you wanna quit, but don't you realize you a god, when you find yourself that love can be all the odds, this real love that leads to freedom of self, nothing can phase you or entice you as well, how I love you is how I love myself, don't you realize you a god?
Yay! I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm giving you a round of applause. <laughs> My bad, y'all. I thought it was. I thought you were playing the King Travel Light one. That was Love Is a Move. Okay. Okay. So when you think about what you did in real time and now looking back. What's next? What's next after a project like this for you? Well, so I'll, I'll highlight my positive dissatisfaction with the project, and that is around the number of camera angles. So what's next is I've been talking a little bit with Vibe Live. Poncho is the producer and owner of that business over downtown and the cereal bar, and they have the space by which we can recreate an experience similar to that. And it'll be its own thing, obviously, but what I'm looking at is five plus camera angles, more investment into said project, because we didn't win any awards with that one. And we actually just got our, our Q2 check though. And our, our quarter two check was pretty sizable. It was the largest check that I've ever received from streaming. And again, I talked about residual income creates happiness. So. You know, this is my way to develop royalties for myself and my family, in addition to what I do in the publishing space with books and, you know, anything else that's intellectual property that I can extract from on a consistent basis. I mean, seed time and harvest and the agricultural space is the exact same thing that I'm using over here in the art and film space from the standpoint of being able to have something that is a gift that keeps on giving. And yeah, that's what's coming so up next. I'm, I have an artist. You rotate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 you know, like I said, I got these fish peppers and uh, fish pepper. You should go look it up. It's an amazing story about a crop that came from Haiti after their revolution. And they were helping us with ours and they live three years. And the first yield is, of course, smaller than the second year, so year's yield. So even with that exact same crop, you can expect higher returns as it matures. And mm -hmm. I'm maturing as the uh, producer and a project manager and somebody who's entering into, into production. Jacksonville is maturing from the standpoint of being the environment that's ready. I call it the Jacksonville Renaissance or Duval Renaissance as far as uh, we're we're ripening right now, and as a community, I would say Florida is maturing, and we have a lot of transplants in town that's coming in. We have a lot of pests that are going out, in my opinion, and so uh, all of these things work together for our good. I think so. And for those of y'all that are just now joining us, we're doing a live remote here at Cafe Resistance for the Moncree Springs Art and Activism series. And I'm here with Trey Ford, who is a filmmaker, an author, uh, elected official with Duval Soil and Water. He is a farmer. He is an entrepreneur. He's a brand strategist. And we've been talking about how art and activism can be very useful tools to building our Black neighborhoods and preserving our Black communities. And so I want to thank y'all again who have been listening to us. And I want to thank our live audience we do have quite a few hey, people hey, hey. here at cafe resistance and Man, so y'all can show how, love. How to see <laughs> you can show love to trey ford if you are in the building and i just want to um thank you trey for saying yes to being on the podcast and sharing your story and kind of cracking the code for us because like i said so many of us as creatives we are still learning how to be great business people and that's why they call Call it show biz. You can make the show, but you got to run the business too. Speaking of business, and you already kind of gave me a good little um, exit uh, to talk about your next projects. Uh, I want you to talk about what you have coming up. And I did a little graphic for oh, trade for enterprises, and there's several things on your list that people can look forward to. So walk us through it. What do you have coming up as far as events go, and how can people connect with you? Sure. So I'm going to skip to brunch on the beach that is being taking place August 10th and it's at the refinery Jacks. Very nice establishment out on the beach. And I just want to say in that, in that instance, we've had times where we didn't feel welcome on the beach and there's only one black owned spot near the beach that I'm, I'm aware of called Voussoir. So check out Voussoir. If you ever get a chance, it's kind of closer to the Mayport area of the beach. Uh, we also have, uh, I have a series, it's an anthology called Ten Toes Down, and each anthology has at least seven artists, or artists and authors, because literary, literary arts is a thing, so 
Um, Ten Toes Down is typically stories that are very transparent, very close to home about the authors either being Ten Toes Down or not being Ten Toes Down or having somebody be or not be Ten Toes Down. The, the How do situations. people with ten, ten Toes Down me? Because, you know, everybody in the Ten Toes Down. I mean, you, they, they, you've been hearing this since 8-Ball and MJG. I think they had the first song that says called Ten Toes Down. But if you search it on music, it, everybody has said it. Recently, even Beyonce I'm thinking Nipsey Hussle. And I'm to me, I, I call it Nipsey Hussle, yeah. yeah. I call yeah. it being steadfast, being rooted, being planted. And Grounded. The context, yeah, the context Flat can lead. range. Yes, you can you can be ten toes down in a romantic relationship as far as how how much fervor you have for keeping that together. You can be ten toes down in a gang, and you know if somebody pop off on your gang, you, you, they get they got to deal with you. You can be ten toes down on your business as it relates to overcoming obstacles. And so again, grounded, steadfast, rooted, and not easily um, pushed out. Okay, I see the uh, fireworks right there. So <laughs> you got some special effects over here, post production. I'm giving it all to you. I'm giving it Come all. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, I, what else was on there? Duval Soil and Water Conservation. The thing I'm most excited about because it's a film opportunity and an agriculture opportunity is Florida Fish Pepper Co., which is really an association, to be honest. It's a nonprofit organization that is supporting growers, and that's defined as homesteaders, gardeners, and farmers because they're sharing some of their space with us for the expansion of this crop, the fish pepper, which again, has a lot of black history embedded into it. You know, I'm a film all through pepper. that. I'm a part of Fish Pepper Co. Come on. Yeah, I so join the alliance. I I've got some seedlings. <laughs> you posted up in the group? It hasn't fruited yet, but it's still alive. Soil's still good, plant's still green. And this is the first time I've ever heard of a fish pepper. So you're exposing me to something even after all that time working on a farm, you know, right. still new things to learn and experience. So I'm happy to support your efforts with Fish Pepper Co. And I'm happy to even just be going on on the journey because I'm learning something new along the way, too. Come on. Come on. Join the Fish Pepper Coalition, the co-op, the alliance, whatever we're calling it. And there's just a lot of opportunity because we're building demand and supply at the same time. And it's called a fish pepper because it's perfect pepper for seafood. And Jacksonville is one of the seafood capitals of the world. Yeah. They like these crab legs Indeed. out here. We got to have some fish peppers growing. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate everything that we discussed. And I'm looking at the comments on Facebook and we're also live on Instagram. A lot of people are saying that this is just good information. And I feel like the people need to hear more from you, uh, Mr. Ford. We, we need to hear your voice more. Yes, we need you to um, be speaking to the people in the community. We need that, that podcast to get launched. We got a couple things in the making between you and I that are in development. And uh, we need 10 toes down at Cafe Resistance. I know she got we black do. authors in here. You need to Aaron bring it on. Day is working on a new cover. We have, we uh, we pulled it off of uh, Amazon. It is available at Chamberlain's, but we will make it available. The new fresh covers at Cafe Resistance as soon as um, Aaron is done with those. And I forgot to shout out my boy Carlos. He gave me my first speaking role in a film. So if y'all want to hear some more from me, come on out September 20th to the private screening world premiere of the future soul and my role in that is a lead scientist who comes up with a time machine, you know, so of course, I can see myself tech. doing that for real. We work on that. Course, you, would tech, you would be the scientist. Come on now. <laughs> my name Richard too. Now you remember what was said about rich, you know what I mean? Come on now. Richie rich. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting it all. I'm getting it all from you. Well, you know, I can't say thank you enough because this whole experience has been experimental for me. And, you know, every time we're together and I have an opportunity to tell people how special you are to me, I use this phrase that you are ultimately supportive. And, you know, it's only one person who has had my back a hundred out of a hundred times and that's my husband and you have proven to be a very good friend to me and, and you're you're a close number two and number three and i say that because you know when you come into relationships with people and you start businesses you work on projects together you spend a lot of time together you don't know what you're gonna get you still learning their personality you're learning their work ethic you're learning how they are on a good day you learn how they are on a bad day and you and i've had more good days than bad days and i'm just so thankful for your support and your trust and for sharing your platform with me. So I just want to honor you for that. And I, I speak blessings over all your businesses. And anybody that is looking for a way to connect with um, creative entrepreneurs 
if you are in the agricultural space and you're looking for a way to start a community garden or to be a homesteader, um, if you're looking for brand strategy consultation, Trey Ford is your guy. And the list goes on and on, but you'll have to connect with him and pay his fee to get the rest of that. But I, I, just I appreciate you for saying that, man, because people be mad at me. I'm like, look, you can't pick my brain for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> hey, when you understand value, you know how to sew when you understand value. And so um, if there's anything else you want to share, let the people know, uh, again, where they can find you or what your next thing is coming up. I know you said brunch on the beach. Anything else you want the people to know about what you're doing or what you got going on? I think we summed it up. And you can, the best page to find all of my things are at I am the DJ Atlas underscore T. That is my... Uh, it's my original page, but I felt like that was the page that was synergizing all of the different events and things like that. And so I don't literally have any turntables, but I feel like I DJ with cities and states, communities and things like that. I'm turning some Agreed. tables around and stuff like that. They're not in the Agreed. club. They're just on a little macro level. Um, so I'm the DJ Atlas. If you know who Atlas is, Greek guy or Titan. Yeah, so, we're all on the shoulders. You know, play a couple plays on words there. Um, but yeah, I am the DJ Atlas T. And then all my agricultural stuff is on Gene for the Peeps, which is right there. And that's where you can find Florida Fish Pepper Co. and all that. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited about uh, Jacksonville Q3. Q3 and Q4, are we in it? That's what's up. Well, those of you that are listening, thank y'all for joining us for Moncree Springs Art and Activism Summer Series. We have another exciting guest that'll be coming with us next week. And so I want y'all to stay tuned. I really appreciate Trey for being with us today, taking time out of his schedule to um, share his experiences and to crack the code for us when it comes to being a creative entrepreneur and how you can be an activist to help build our black neighborhoods back. I also want to thank Angie Nixon for letting us do our live remote here at Cafe Resistance. She'll be open all day today so you can come and shop your favorite black authors. There's quite a few um, books on the shelves that I'm particularly interested in. I'm building my Octavia Butler collection. Last time I was here, I got Parable of the Sower and now I see that she has Kindred on the shelf. And so y'all got to come and check her out. Um, she'll be here all day here on Sutel Road. And I want y'all to like and share this post. For anybody that may need to connect to some of these resources that Trey Ford shared with us, make sure you tag them and give us some feedback. Let us know what you heard and how you enjoyed it. And we'll be talking to y'all again soon. Take care and have a blessed day. This is Dana Michelle and we'll see you next week. <laughs>